Alrighty, everyone, welcome back. So, our standings predictions conclude today with the Pacific Division. Um, so, if you didn't check out the other three, they are public on the channel, so make sure to go check them out. Um, those All those rankings are released, but regardless, the Pacific Division, arguably the weakest division in the NHL, um, but regardless, there still lie some questions on how this division is going to go for some of these teams. Regardless, something that shouldn't be a question is who is finishing last. Uh, number eight, uh, for the second straight year in my predictions, I had the San Jose Sharks finishing last in the division. Uh, last year I had them eighth and they finished seventh only because Anaheim had a terrible year. But hopefully Anaheim should be better this coming year, which means San Jose will be the worst. They traded away Eric Carlson. Um... Aside from that, they don't have a whole lot of assets either. The guys that got back in return were decent. Um, Mike Hoffman's going to do well. Duclair's going to do solid. Solid moves that guys you can flip off of the deadline. Um, so definitely good signings there for San Jose. But regardless, they will be bad. Um, like They probably will be worst team in the league bad, um, if we're being honest. That's where I see them finishing. Um, it just seems the most realistic. Um, I, I can't see them finishing above other teams because it seems like every other team besides them is kind of on the rise right now. So we'll obviously find out um, what happens there, but they should be eighth, no question. Number seven, however, is where things get interesting. I have the Anaheim Ducks finishing seventh. Last year I had them finishing fifth, and they finished eighth. It was a terrible year, an absolutely painful team to watch. I remember watching a few of those games towards the end of the season, especially, and I'm just thinking to myself, oh my God, this is terrible. So yeah, like it, it, they are in a, they were in a bad spot. They're going to get better this year for sure. Um, but it's September 28th and Trevor Zegers and Jamie Drysdale have still not been signed. Still through, through this amount of time, October is literally three days away. And um, the, none, neither of those players have signed a contract yet. So that is something that is concerning. But regardless, if they come back, they should be better. They should be better um, for a, you know, for a, for a team that was bad last year. Uh, some of the younger guys coming into the lineup um, going to hopefully progress more. Um, you know, they have an okay roster, but it's no roster that's going to help them out and make like the playoffs as of right now. So honestly, realistically, they're going to be seventh again, but this should be the last year of them being seventh. Hopefully, Ho hopefully, hopefully it's the last year. Number six, um, I have the Vancouver Canucks. And I already see some disagreement with this. Um, people don't like this take at all. Um, just because of how Vancouver kind of improved over the off season, which I agree they kind of did, but I just, I still don't see them as a legitimate playoff contending team. Last year I had them fourth and they finished sixth. So I'm going with them going sixth. I can't see it any other way. Um, just realistically, like I look at this roster, they have a good offensive core. Their defense is questionable, although I think it will be better. And then goaltending is going to be decent, but I, I don't know. It all depends on that start of the season. If they start off well, then they're probably a playoff team. If they go like 0-5 out of the gate again, then they're not making the playoffs another year. But realistically, they do look better, and it wouldn't surprise me if they finish above some of the teams that I'm going to say here. But as of right now, I have them locked in at 6th in the Pacific. Um, at number 5, I have the Seattle Kraken. Last year, I had them 6th, and they finished 4th. Um, so it was a very surprising year. Seattle had a great season. Um, and it was a year where a bunch of misfits came into the playoffs, defeated the Stanley Cup champions, and damn near defeated uh, the Dallas Stars as well. Um, but, you know, this year I feel like they might take a little bit of a step back because they might have gotten lucky last year, I feel like. But still, they're, they're, they're a solid roster. Um, and missing the playoffs this year isn't going to hurt them too much. Um, you know, you have a young, you have a young pool here. You have a young group of guys coming in and especially another, another high draft pick too, uh, would for sure help. And they weren't expected to make it last year. So I don't think they should be expected to make it this year either. If we're being honest. Um, but yeah, Seattle, I like them more and more every year. They're going to keep improving in the standings for sure. Um, it's just going to take some time. Here's where things get interesting. Number four, I have the Los Angeles Kings. And people might disagree with this a lot. Last year, I had them second and they finished third. LA with me, I feel like, and it's all because of the goaltending. 
It's it's all because of that goaltending of Phoenix Copley, David Riddick, and Cam Talbot. I cannot see that making the playoffs in a top three spot. I can't. Um, just so much question is there. Don't get me wrong. I like Phoenix Copley. He's probably going to be the starting goaltender. Um, and he had decent numbers last year in LA. But besides that, I can't see. I can't see a world where they finish top three with that goaltending tandem. The rest of the team is fine. The rest of the team is pretty great, and they're and they've done they've done well for themselves. But I can't see them being a top three team in this specific division this year with that goaltending tandem. And credit to them, it was difficult for them to find a goaltender. They didn't have a lot of options when they signed Talbot, when they signed Riddick, uh, because a lot of the guys were already taken off the market, um, and of course they couldn't keep Corpusalo around. So that was obviously a factor. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest X factor right now with LA. We're going to see how that pans out for sure. Uh, number three, then, I have them, the Calgary Flames, at three. Um, I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. Last year, I had them third, and as a result, they finished fifth. Um, but, yeah, Calgary, I feel like people underrated them a little bit because if they could actually win it overtime, they could have been like a 40 to 50, 48 to 51 team around that area. Um, it's just the fact that they, they suck an extra time. And I, I hate to say that to Flames fans, but it is – it kind of is the truth. Um, but yeah, like regardless, I think they'll be better this year. The goaltending is obviously a question there too, but I think it's a better situation than LA's, 100%. Um, and of course, if Dustin Wolf comes in and plays well in the games he plays, not sure how they're going to handle that just yet. But if he comes in and plays well, then they're they're in a really good spot. But overall, um, I like the direction of where they're going. And they obviously renamed uh, Michael Backlund as their captain. So that's a factor there too. So yeah, we'll see. Uh, number two, I had the Vegas Golden Knights. Last year, I had them seventh, and they finished first. Uh, that was a horrible take, and I will never do that. <laughs> never do that again. Uh, but yeah, regardless, Vegas, uh, they'll be good this year. Um, they've proven, but time and time and again, that no matter what they go through, they can be good. Uh, they won the Stanley Cup last year, so obviously they're going to be trying to go for back to back, which you know they have a good shot at doing so. But overall, they're a solid team. Uh, basically the same roster minus like Riley Smith and a few other guys. So they will be trying to make a second straight run at that Stanley Cup for sure. And finally, at number one, uh, for the second straight year, I am high and high flying high on the Evans Oilers. Again, I have them first in the Pacific. Uh, last year I had them first and they finished this at second. Um, I see them being a great team this year. I feel like people hate on the goaltending and Stuart Skinner. People forget though that he's a rookie. He was a rookie last year, um, and I think that definitely, you know, in his, in his sophomore year, it could be a massive breakout season for him goaltending-wise, and that could be the problem that Edmonton needs to fix, and Skinner could be the one that does it for him. Maybe I'm too high on Edmonton, maybe I'm too high on Skinner, but hey, I think it's definitely going to be a good year for them for sure. I've seen question of McDavid getting like 170 points. Hey, I've seen, I didn't think he'd get 150. I've seen crazier things happen, so... Yeah, that is my prediction for the Pacific Division. Again, the other three divisions are up on the channel. Uh, so if you want to go check those out, make sure to do so. But yeah, that concludes uh, our, our standings predictions for this past year. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. That's on down below. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll make a few more videos before, like a few more prediction-related videos um, before the season begins. We have a free week of just nothing. Um, so I'm probably going to either finish off the prospect pool overviews, or I'm going to make some predictions videos like that. So anyways, uh, but stay tuned for those. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.